Hi, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week, and to sharing some practical security advice along the way. I'm your all-around security nerd and host, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting March 24th, 2014. This week's video comes a bit late because I was traveling in Oslo, Norway to speak at one of our partners' big security conferences. The partner is Watchcom and the conference is called Paranoia. Paranoia is an annual security conference and probably one of the biggest in Norway. This year there is approximately 500 attendees. Besides me speaking there, there is also Miko Hiponen who spoke on the surveillance state, talking about the balance of power between NSA and our privacy and how it's probably swung too far into one extreme. I also listened to a great talk by Karsten Knoll, who talked about some pretty significant flaws in cryptography, but also talked about how big vulnerabilities in crypto may not necessarily turn into exploitable flaws without secondary flaws in the protocol as well. Finally, there's a talk from an IBM X-Force researcher, Michael Hamelin, who basically talked about the state of the threat today. It was a very good show, and I had a great time there. Let's go ahead and dive right into the three security stories this week, starting with a zero-day flaw in Word. Early in the week, Microsoft released a security advisory describing a flaw that affected Word 2010 and potentially other versions. Long story short, if an attacker can trick you into opening a specially crafted RTF document, he can take advantage of this flaw to execute remote code on your machine, basically gaining control of it if you have administrative access. This potentially affects many versions of Word, though it seems to target 2010 in what what Microsoft calls targeted limited attacks. In another blog post from Blue Coat, I read that this vulnerability that was seen in the wild is really kind of a fail. It has a lot of flaws with it that makes it so it doesn't succeed very often. Nonetheless, if you use Word, be sure to go get Microsoft's Fix It and look for a patch in the future. The second story of the week affects Cisco router and switch users. If you happen to use Cisco's iOS operating system, this week Cisco warned that it suffers from seven different security vulnerabilities. Most of them were denial of service vulnerabilities affecting things like Cisco's NAT processing and DNS processing. Long story short, if attackers can send specially crafted packets to your routers or switches, they can leverage these flaws to put them in a denial of service state. So if you run Cisco iOS iOS devices, be sure to go get Cisco's updates. I'll be sure to post links to them in the blog post associated with this video. The last story of the week has to do with the Android vulnerability that could end up bricking your phone. Remember last week when I talked about Ibrahim Balak and how he had DDoSed the Google Play Marketplace? As it turned out, according to Trend Micro, Balak had found an undisclosed memory corruption flaw having to do with Android applications. Long story short, if he created an application with a 387,000 character long name, he can actually put your Android device into an endless reboot cycle, basically bricking your phone so you can no longer use it. And it turns out it was this application he was uploading to the Google Marketplace to test. Well, there's no fix for this vulnerability yet, but it's one to watch, so if you run Android devices, be sure to get the latest firmware updates as they come out. So that's it for this week's On the Road edition of my video. I'm sorry I had to post it so late, but it was unavoidable due to travel. And by the way, I'll be traveling to Interop for a security show next week, as well as to the Asia Pacific the week after. So my videos may not come out as regularly on Friday as they do. Rather, they may come out a bit before or a bit after. Nonetheless, there's a lot of other security stories this week, so be sure to check out the blog post associated with this video. And you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept, or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuard tech. As always, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard we're rooting for you.
There's a call me coming over you Oh, I can feel you coming I can hear you coming I can see you coming to see my